Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project and it is my deep honour and pleasure to be here with Mr George Hathaway of Hathaway Consulting in this incredibly dead and special room. Tell me something about this room we're in, George. Uh, the room is actually, oh, hello, it's George <laughs> Hathaway. <laughs> Um, the room is a specially constructed uh, radio frequency anechoic chamber uh, that is filled with cones, as you can see. Uh, when we uh, at Hathaway Research, uh, the old company was called Hathaway Consulting, this is now Hathaway Research, uh, are doing um, special uh, pulse power projects where we're radiating a lot of energy or we're doing very uh, fine and uh, delicate uh, radio frequency or otherwise um, measurements in here and we don't want external radio frequency from messing up the uh, the measurements. So uh, it's, it's, it, it, I, I've been here for a few days and George has been very kind to show me around. There's a lot of cool, cool equipment here. You just would not believe it. But uh, I, I've seen you show me some things which I'd like to maybe have another segment on. You, you showed me something that was look, looking at um, Ken Shoulder's Evos at one point. Yes, we can do that later perhaps. Yeah, uh, and there was another device uh, which may be the most suitable device, I think, for assessing the output from George Eagley's uh, oh, yeah, so-called device. Yeah, show, show yeah. you some of those too. Okay, so um, but, let's go to it. What have we got in front of it, us here? Um, these are samples that were taken during the time uh, that or were made by John uh, Hutchison um, during the time that Alex Pizarro and myself under the uh, company called Ferros Technologies uh, were in business with uh, trying to uh, understand what the scientific background and basis were uh, was for uh, what John was able to do. And uh, this was in the uh, late 80s and 90s and uh, Ferros Technologies uh, was able to to uh, garner some funds to allow us to do some analyses on the samples that uh, were, um, well, in the, what we call it LADS, L-A-D-S uh, technique, which was uh, the lift and destruction or dis <laughs> disruption uh, system. So we're concentrating here on the disruption part of the LADS system, L-A-D-S. Uh, the, uh, the, a lifting part is uh, something that uh, we can't really show here, although I can show one of the uh, devices that, uh, or several of them, which actually lifted. Uh, a lot of the time I was not available for John's demonstrations back in the, uh, the, the, the 90s uh, because, simply because of distance. I lived, and I still do, uh, near Toronto, and John was in Vancouver, and Alex Pizarro, my business partner in Ferros Technologies, was in Vancouver. So he witnessed much more than I did. And to, to, to put that in perspective for the people that come from Europe, those places are very far apart. Right? Uh, yeah, and it takes a while. And as you recall, perhaps uh, John, uh, John's hit rate, you might say, was very slow mm -hmm. or very, very mm -hmm. minimal. So if I would come out or anyone would come um, hoping to see something in a day, some anything you'd have a like a 50 50 chance of actually seeing something in a day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. otherwise you're sitting around waiting and waiting while snap crackle lighting but you actually did see something yes yes and you and saw I'll something describe. with co uh, i'll describe that uh, yes, yeah yes, yeah yes. so that's also one of the reasons why i wasn't there all the time because mm -hmm. i'd have to shuttle out and there Nothing happens. But Alex, fortunately, was able to uh, be there for a lot of the demonstrations. Um, and with regard to what I personally saw, um, I saw a uh, piece of steel about this size, which was a ring shaped. So it had, uh, it, it was an annulus and about this long. And it was sitting on a table, um, somewhat like this. And as John was manipulating his uh, energies, uh, whatever they were, um, suddenly we heard a snap, and the corner of the uh, of of this uh, annulus um, broke off, and some of the pe pieces are there. Uh, there are various pictures that I'm sure Bob is going to have uh, up uh, on of this. Um, 
piece that's lying on a piece of plywood with a bunch of powder, it looks like, right. uh, off yes, the yes. end. Yeah, I've taken some great photos. Uh, George has uh, given complete access to his archive and there are a plethora of beautiful slide images and and all kinds of stuff. So yeah. it's a lot of work, but we're getting through it. So. Yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of work. Um, so who saw it? Um, at the time that uh, Ferris started uh, interacting with John, um, uh, I called up uh, a personal a friend who was the head of a company called Venus Scientific in New York State. That man's name was Filippo Galuppi. He's dead now, unfortunately, but he came up uh, because he had supplied a high voltage power supply to John, I think it was, at John's request. And he came up with his girlfriend at the time and later wife, Mary Galuppi. And <clears throat> uh, my friend Alex, a business partner Alex, was there too. And we saw this occur. Um, and unfortunately, uh, at Did the that time, change you? No, because I knew, I, I had seen very strange things. Oh, okay. So this was just another strange thing. <laughs> well, this was, uh, this was on a different level of strangeness, right, I right. must say. Yeah. Um, but uh, from what Alex had told me, that's mm -hmm. another thing. Mm -hmm. He said, this happened, this happened, this happened, come on out. And if you're lucky, and we were at the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this has happened. So yeah, this happened. Wow. Yeah, yeah. In addition, uh, uh, another time I was out, um, I saw a, uh, a, a ferrite disc, much as you'd see at the back of a speaker, for mm -hmm, instance, mm -hmm. but this was a non-magnetic ferrite disc about, well, that size yeah. with a hole in it. Uh, it was a ring and it took off and shook and then dropped to the floor, uh, dropped. Wow, that's interesting because the, one of the only people to replicate John uh, was a guy, in, guy called Stoyan Sargachev and he had a piece of ferrite and it bent in a... Yeah, I can tell you about Stoyan later. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine. Um, anyway, so uh, that I hope gives you some aspect uh, of, of what I was able to see mm -hmm. personally. Um, I'm not... Uh, those are the only two times mm -hmm. when I saw anything significant. Right. On occasion, uh, I would see some paper moving around mm -hmm. or some foil, mm -hmm. which he, he also liked to put bits of foil to find out where the active area was mm -hmm. uh, because he didn't know in advance uh, where... Actually, it, when you were doing your other lab, that when you moved it, you actually put up loads of, was it ping pong balls that to try was, and work out the yeah, active area? Yeah, that was uh, just prior to the uh, Army INSCOM mm -hmm. folk coming up mm -hmm. uh, from Los Alamos. And we tried to find out where the active area or what was there an active mm -hmm. area above the lab. So all those ping pong balls are above right. a, 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 a room that was in a warehouse. It wasn't my lab. It was a warehouse space we rented for You didn't the want it falling demo. down. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. Uh, so some strange things happened, but of course, uh, well, I'll go to that story later. Mm -hmm. But uh, during that demonstration, uh, one, uh, one or, or actually more of the high, high voltage transformers uh, blew itself apart. And that scuttled the, uh, the demonstration mm -hmm. because as usual, these folk come up Okay, we're here for three hours. Our plane's got to go out, okay. you know, in in uh, yeah. in a couple of hours. So let's see it. They're used to watching test firing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you press a button, bam, off it goes. Well, that worked. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Anyway, so that was most disappointing, uh, and very disappointing for John. He was also very hyped before this demo because mm -hmm. if this mm -hmm. demo had gone well, maybe the world had changed. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I'm sure the military world would have changed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, anyway. So, you've got a wide range of samples yes. here. Uh, what are your favorites? Uh, uh, let's start with those. Well, one of them is the, uh, the spiraled up uh, piece of uh, aluminum angle. You can see the angle mm -hmm, mm -hmm. shape there. And uh, it had a piece of wood Im not embedded in it. And this is not one of the ones where there's a melding of, of mm -hmm. organic and inorganic, you might say. But it was stuck in there for some reason, I don't know, John had put something together with this screw, and you can see that... It's actually it, formed with Yes, the... it's, it's curled a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's no uh, scarring, there's no scorching, mm -hmm, there's mm -hmm. no nothing mm -hmm. on the wood, yeah, yeah. and yet this thing would have taken quite some heat yeah. 
to uh, to rotate it or so, certainly spot, above the ignition like, temperature of absolutely. cellulose. That's right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> other classic ones. Uh, this. Well, there's that. But if you can see the. This is perhaps the famous magnet, uh, magnetized file. Um, the magnetism has unfortunately disappeared over the 20 years or, no, no, is it 35 years or something <laughs> this was done. Um, but when, as you, you can also see on the video, there was, there were close-ups of this. And this part, when it was together, would start to glow and glow and then sparks come off and then the, th then the right, uh, right, the right. pieces pulled apart. Mm -hmm. They pulled apart because they were magnetically, say north north, south south, north north, instead of north south. So they repelled instead of attracted, which is what they should have. This done. is very interesting because uh, I had a very different journey to you. I, I really hadn't considered John Hutchison as being anything to do with cold fusion, <laughs> and. Uh, I came to the point of seeing these monopole type structures and when I started interacting with John, I, 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 I wrote to him one day and I said, I think monopoles are involved. And he says, well, that's interesting. That's exactly what George said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, possibly. I'm saying that that's a possibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's uh, very strange. Mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. so the, another important specimen is this molybdenum rod that uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Alexander supplied to John. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, he, has a, he had a duplicate mm -hmm. he kept as a, uh, as a control, mm -hmm. sent this to me, I sent it to John, and <clears throat> the, the, the going opinion was that if he could bend this, he's got something. Right. If he could bend it without or any clamp without any clamp or, or anything like that. Alex Pizarro saw this in action. I did mm -hmm. not. Um, it was laying on John's plywood table, mm -hmm. and it just started slowly wiggling. And Alex shouted, "Stop!" <laughs> and it, and they caught the wow. They actually caught that wow. The wiggle in uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway. Because uh, the one. thing about molybdenum, it's a very strong and it's a very high temperature Absolutely. melting point, yes, isn't it? Absolutely, yes, so yes, yeah. Even it's uh, above 2,000, very yeah. high, so. Uh, C, yeah. so. Anyway, those are significant to me. There's the standard standard kind yeah, of yeah. Uh, breaks that everyone's, everyone, anyone who's interested has seen. Yeah. There are unusual kinds of breaks mm -hmm. that didn't quite make it, uh, you might say, to pull a piece apart. I think that's almost more interesting because uh, it still shows that it's bound together. You've, you've got the starting of the fracturing yeah, process. Yeah. And by the way, there's a cut we made, obviously, mm -hmm. to take a chunk to analyze it. Yeah. Speaking of analysis, um, there are all sorts of SEM mounts or pieces that have been polished, mm -hmm. mounted in SEM so, or, and, and polished so for microscopy mm -hmm. purposes, which you'll see many uh, yes. examples. Yeah, I've been see. looking at um, negatives and positives. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. So uh, also there are, um, there are rather healthy pieces like this that don't. This is a steel, uh, this is a hardened steel, which doesn't show these kinds of uh, uh, this kind of uh, this action. This sort of uh, along yeah. the grain boundary. Effect, right. It's kind this of... just snapped. Yeah. There, you, I've taped it together, but yeah. there are cracks. It, the whole thing comes apart in about 12 pieces. <laughs> That's <laughs> why I, I keep it. Uh, yeah, it, we've got a very like good that. photo of that actually yeah, yeah. in many different angles. So. Yeah. And there's a, in this case, a magnet. I, I presume John did something to it, but he gave it to me. In this case, it is magnetized yeah. the way it should be, you might mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what to make of that too much. Yeah. Uh, there are different kinds of metals. Obviously, we've gone through molybdenum. We've gone through tool steel. Um, we've gone through aluminum, and there's brass, uh, things that have uh, have uh, warped mm -hmm. a bit, uh, no heat um, showing. And we've, So how do you tell there's no heat? Uh, generally because in oxygen, in, in an atmospheric mm -hmm. uh, uh, situation, which all of John's work was, uh, you'd get uh, a coloration around right, the Right, yeah. Discoloration. Be because uh, copper, it, the, the it copper, makes black oxide yeah, and, and so the on. Zinc and zinc's the, white oxide. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. so you get a discoloration uh, mm -hmm. very clearly. Um, then there are really interesting bends, um, tight bends that 
are really difficult to do uh, without uh, without considerable heat. And, and it, it doesn't look like it's kinked on the inside, does it? Right. Uh, it, it's it, it's like it be smooth. It would be an ideal huh. for uh, for uh, pipe benders. Yeah, right. <laughs> Man, if I yeah, could do yeah, this, yeah. I didn't have to, you know, fill it with sand, fill it fill a tube with sand and then incrementally with heat bend yeah. it around and you'd get stretch marks here and I mean, as you this say is, this is a big billet and it's, it's, yeah, it's very stainless. smoothly <laughs> deformed <laughs> yeah can yeah. i don't know how to do it otherwise <laughs> yeah. on the other hand if you have uh, well that that that's stainless this is uh, uh regular steel so this is ma magne uh, ferromagnetic this is not ferromagnetic yeah, yeah okay yeah you're right and uh, I think John has the other half of this. Mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. I have, but it bent around too, like this. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it didn't do a nice bend. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's because of the austenitic nature mm -hmm. of the steel there or what, I, I, what the you difference know, I, was. I think it's because it's ferromagnetic. The monopoles that you identified here, I have a very small piece of um, ferromagnetic material, mm -hmm. and in the bend, it has these triangular sections where it's been it, it's opposite and it <laughs> looks like it's pushed it apart pushed i'll apart, show yeah. you the images okay. but it, I, I i think that's it, it can't bind to this in the way that it seems it to may, bind yeah. to the ferromagnetic uh, the other thing that is significant about this is that if you examine it closely you can see bits of copper that have come out okay. of solution in my opinion right okay so and they were an impurity in the material uh, or an alloy Okay. It could have been an alloy. Mm -hmm. and, did, and did you test the other end to see if it has any... Yes, we, t we can see there's a cut okay. there and there's a cut there. And, and, and was here there's any... not... Couldn't see any. Okay. Or any blobs. I mean, it was an alloy with copper, mm -hmm. but the, the alloy, the alloying elements did not suddenly sort of come out of solution and congeal into blobs of the alloy, uh, the alloy right. uh, element. And this is what we found. Uh, I think there, there are other examples of it. Um, when so, so, look, so you mean it, it doesn't separate into copper? It, what does it do? Well, um, or it, it comes it, out as copper. It comes out as copper. Mm -hmm. In this case, mm -hmm. there's probably molybdenum and some other alloying elements right, right, right. that are impossible, certainly impossible to see with yeah. the naked eye mm -hmm. if they're well alloyed. Mm -hmm. I mean, if this is a well done bar, mm -hmm. you know, the alloys mixed in with the iron. Uh, and and ca uh, and carbon or whatever else, but only under circumstances that I'm holding here mm -hmm. have I ever seen blobs of the <clears throat> alloying element. See it. Yes, right. yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. somehow migrate out of solution yeah. and into a blob that is big enough to see. Right, right, right. Um, and that happens at the grain boundaries, as mm -hmm. we found in mm -hmm. some of the analyses of these things, too. Okay, so w what you've done when you're doing these analyses, you've taken a, a, a piece and you've done a section and polished that section. Correct, uh, as example. Okay, and this then, one, then on the grain boundaries within the crystals, within yes. that section that you've you cut and see. polished, you see these come out of solution. Yes, so in some okay. cases, yeah. yeah. And, and, then, and do you think, because it, it seems to be like affecting the electrons in some way such that they don't hold the lattice together in an ordinary way that, and and that maybe yeah maybe you've got melting points at different levels and so it gets more affected either because it's more conductive or whatever i mean could be yeah i'm holding judgment on, yeah, on, the, course, yeah, on yeah. the how yeah, yeah. i'm just you know can report on the what we see mm -hmm. uh, or we saw analysis wide this was these were done 25, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then there's the classical flowering yep. um, and uh, a piece of uh, quartz, I believe, that was melted. Uh, it doesn't have sharp. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Sharp uh, edges. There's a particular yeah. good uh, example yes, 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 of, yeah. uh, of it being melted yeah. Yeah. on a corner. So the. This is, um, is, it, is it a drawn aluminium bit? Yes. So yeah, it, I think it it's would drawn. actually have crystal yes, grains correct. going and in the line. And you can see yeah. roughly, and that's why it opened up this way. That was the easy way to open. So the, I, when I've seen the, I have some samples that have got some similar features, mm -hmm. and I've kind of likened it to this, where the, we've seen in different technology, uh, which is obviously the same thing, it seems mm -hmm. to go along the crystal boundaries and form these layers. Now, if yes. they are monopole and then monopole, it's kind of 
pushing itself apart. It could be, yeah, yeah, it could be the same thing that happened here. Nothing to do with magnetism. Well, no, something uh, pushing apart. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, maybe electromagnetic force of some, mm -hmm. not, I should say, not purely like uh, uh, permanent magnetism. Yeah, right, uh, right. Yeah, I think it's more subtle than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, that sort of sums up uh, very quickly the samples that I have. I notice you have a brass sample here and it looks uh, yeah, you a little bit take... similar. We're going to have a look at that. Yeah, um, it's a, a, it sheet, a sheet of brass. Yeah, yeah, to what we've observed recently. Yep. So um, anyway, that sort of sums up the <laughs> the major so if you, uh, things that I have. If you were to pick a favourite, I know I asked you at the beginning, what would it be? I, yeah, I mean, you, you, I you've, you've so handled many. this one a lot because it's it's the yeah, yeah. typical example of the the uh, planar <laughs> fracture. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't really. It's hard to tell what a what a favourite is. Um, uh, I suppose it's a toss up between the so called monopoles and yeah. this guy. But John has, there's so many other things that John has done with, mm -hmm. uh, not with that is attendant on John, mm -hmm. <laughs> like lighting effects and, and weird uh, ways that uh, uh, vis and inviscid material flow mm -hmm. uh, and, and obviously all the lifting phenomena as well. So, um, well, thank hard you to very tell. much, George, <laughs> okay. for uh, running through your samples. I'm hoping to get some really nice uh, macro photography of them for the book. Yeah, and, excellent. Uh, 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 it's been a real pleasure to be here. He's an excellent host. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, thank That's you very good. much. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Bob.